Okay, what do we have today? Hi. Hello everyone. Looks like we're going to uh, do Carnot maps. One of my favorite topics. Carnot map is kind of like uh, like Venn diagram, except it's much more organized and you can <laughs> patterns. Uh, Carnot maps were invented in 1953. And uh, guess what? It's one of the most powerful tools to simplify a Boolean equation. And you know, if you simplify a Boolean equation, you simplify the uh, circuit behind it. If you simplify the circuit, the microprocessors will work faster and it will be cheaper. So uh, this is very important that you know this, uh, this topic. Um, Maurice Carnot, he's a local boy, he's a local professor. <clears throat> he he was a student at City College in the Bronx, and he was a professor of City Univers University of New York Uni at the time. I've met him about 20 years ago in uh, NYU, at NYU Poly in Brooklyn, Polytechnic in Brooklyn, and he was a professor up there, professor of um, uh, engineering, computer engineering. That's what I was uh, doing when I was in college. And uh, he's now 95 and he still, he, he still kicks, still good. All right, so this is a picture of him and uh, explaining his uh, four variable Arnaud map. Uh, as you see on the top, there are some, some Venn diagrams, so he's starting to co probably connect Venn diagrams to uh, Carnot maps. Carnot maps are much more powerful than Venn diagrams. You can see every in term separately. In the Venn diagrams, you kind of can argue. Okay, so let's look at um, what Carnot maps are. So Carnot maps are grids. As you see, you have a map with the grids of four fields. Every field represents one min term. Let's look at min term zero, x prime y prime, min term one, x prime y, and so forth. So we have a two variable, a two variable function. In two variable function, you have uh, four terms, four possible terms, min term zero to min term two. And this map represents uh, two variable function. Okay, uh, let's learn how to use them. Okay, the best way to do it is to do it on the example. So we'll do the example. Look at this. Uh, let's say you have a function expressed in canonical form. We're going to have all the functions expressed in canonical forms, and we're going to transfer the function into a K map. Okay, let's do it. Uh, first function. Uh, Function or uh, sum of min term one. All right, so this is what, how you would transfer. Look at what min terms are present in the function, and then you transfer it to the map. So that means if the min term one is present in a function, you put one, one, you put one in the min term one grid. The rest of them are zeros. Okay, so now as you see, uh, min term one, we're, and then we're going to group the min terms. Grouping means putting them in circles. So this is min term one right here. And uh, the simplest outcome of this function is one. So let's write it up. This is going to be equal to x prime y. All right, and we cannot uh, simplify this function anymore. That means uh, a number will not only simplify the functions for you, but it will tell you if you can or cannot simplify the functions. So let's look. Uh, okay, so that's the first example. Let's continue. Let's erase this and let's look at the example number two. All right. Example number two: zero and. Uh, Two. Okay, let's look at zero and two. Function is the following right here. So let's transfer the function into the K map. Zero and two are present. That means we're going to put one and one where zero and two is. And min term one and min term three are not. 
present in a function. So it looks like we have this two right here. Okay. Now, um, this part of the map is called a curve right here. Okay, so the map, our example one was a single. Only single mean term was present, x plus y. And uh, this one is a pair. Guess what? The pair indicates that the function can be simple. So let's look how the function is simple. Um, the pair of 0 and 2 is the following algebraically. x prime, y prime, plus x, y prime. When you factor out y prime, you're going to have x prime plus plus x in parentheses. x prime plus x is equal to 1, so we're canceling the parentheses, and we have y prime. All right, so as you see, this mean term 0, 2 simplified to just y prime. Let's look at this, uh, this pair. The pair has the following, x prime, y prime, and x, y prime. Just one look at the map will show you that this y prime doesn't change within the pair. x prime changes. So if the variable changes within the group, that means this variable is gone. The variable that stays, that's the function. So the variable that stays is y prime. The variable that changes is x prime into x. This is gone. So that means we have only y prime. So we can simplify this two mean terms into y prime. Okay, let's look at the next example. Let's have an example. Okay. And let's look at the next example. Let's transfer mean terms 0 and 3. Okay. In terms 0 and 3, that means term 0 is in term 0 is present, in term 3 is present. Okay. This looks like a pair, but it's not. Alright, this is where where we are. We are right here and we are right here. Oh. Okay. Uh, in order for a K-map group to be a pair, the squares have to be adjacent with entire side. This, uh, this two mean terms are adjacent with just the cone. They, that means this is not a pair. And we cannot simplify this. x prime y prime plus x y, no matter what you do, you can into one variable. Pair simplifies this function into one variable. Okay, uh, this is called the diagonals. Okay, so this is what we call diagonal. Those are, this is not a pair. There are two singles right here. And how do we denote this on a map? It's as follows. Single and single. We cannot make it into a pair. So uh, this map tells you the function cannot be simple. And if you want to express this express this uh, uh, in algebraic equations that will be x prime y prime that's mean term zero plus x that's mean term three okay yeah this cannot be simplified you cannot factor anything out but you can use x x uh, right. we'll simplify it on a hardware level we're going to learn how to do it Okay, uh, next example. Sum of mean terms 2 and 3. So let's look at this. Where is this map? Okay, do the razor right here. Okay, let me just simplify. And there is this map. All right. Now it's uh, all right. So what do we have here? 
uh, min term two and three. Let's transfer it. Min term two and min term three are present in a function. Min term zero and one are absent. All right. So it looks like we are we have a pair because these two min terms are adjacent. These two min terms are adjacent right here of entire side. This entire side is what is adjacent. Okay, uh, so let's look at this. We have x, which is common, and y prime becomes y. So if you factor out x out of this two, you're going to have y plus y prime. Let's write it up. So we have the following here. Uh, x, y prime plus y prime. Uh, let's see if it simplifies. X, x, y prime plus Wow, wow. So let's factor out x. Why is it changing? It's changing. Y plus y prime. All right. Uh, let's get rid of this. Uh, this one is gone. It's equal to 1. And that's it. Okay. So we can simplify it algebraically. Or you can plot this on the map and look at it. X the same prime becomes y. That means that variable is gone. Okay, let's look at the following: zero, one, two, and three. Okay, so function. Let's erase map. Function has a mean terms of zero, one, two, and three. And three. All right. So now there are three ways of cover this map with the group. You can make it four singles, which is not a good idea because each group will generate the term. Or you can do two pairs, one and two. Or you can do two pairs this way, one and two. All right, so let's do two pairs. I'll show you something. Um, so the pairs will be the following. Uh, let's do horizontal pairs, one and two. All right, that means we have two groups, this group and this group. Uh, so this group, if our function, let's write it here, our function will be equal to the following. Uh, the upper horizontal pair, that, there will be x prime, because x is, x prime is a constant here, and y prime changes. And uh, the second group will have a x constant. Uh, x constant, because y prime changes to y. Okay, uh, and that is equal to 1. All right, this function is equal to 1. That means if we have an entire map covered with the mean terms, that means what, there's a 1 everywhere we go on the map, the function is equal to 2. Because the map will tell you what is the value of the function in certain parts of the map. And uh, this function tells you, this This map tells you the function is always equal to 1. So when, no matter where you go, you always end up with 1. So this means this entire function is equal to 1. Okay? All right. Now, uh, this one is not, we, this is not a good idea to, uh, to find the groups like this. Better way of doing it. Let's erase this and I'll show it. Gone. All right, so let's uh, repopulate this. We have four ones. So instead of pairs, we're going to have uh, 
the following. This entire map can be covered with one quad. This group is called one. Okay? The bigger group, the better uh, the better simplification. All right, let's put this. Now the quad is right here. Quad is right here. And look at this group. Every variable changes. X prime changes to X as you can see here, vertically. And Y prime changes to Y horizontally. That means all variables change in this group. That means all variables are gone. And the map is covered with ones. That means this function is equal to 1 right away. Okay? All right. So we know the following. Let's review a little bit. We know the following. We, have, we can create the following functions, the following groups. This is called a single. A single can be here. A single can be here. A single can be anywhere. This is two, two diagonal singles. Okay. Now uh, let's let's uh, look at this. This is called a pair right here. Pair can be horizontal or pair can be vertical. So we can we can have pair. Pair eliminates one variable. Single doesn't eliminate any. Pair eliminates one variable. Quad eliminates two variables. This is a quad. Look at this beautiful quad. Quad eliminates two variables. But because function is a two variable function right here, that means the quad eliminates all variables. And what's left is one everywhere. Okay, now let's uh, look at one more gimmick of the map. Okay, you need to know a little bit more about the map. So let's look at the following. The last example. So this one is, we can write it down, this is equal to one. Right, this is equal to one. Uh, very interesting. This is equal to one. All right, blue is okay. All right, now uh, this zero one two three. All right, so let's look at zero one two three. Let's let's see. The blue. Zero is present. One and zero one and three. Two is absent. With. Okay, what I did is I transferred canonical form, sum of 0, 1, 3, into a map, and I will try to simplify it. Okay, I see the following. I have a pair right here. Okay, so this is. And uh, let's write the function for this pair. This group will generate the following term. Because a y prime changes into y, this one is only x. All right, now, uh, this is a single, but we can do better, because single doesn't eliminate any variable, but pair does. And the more variables we eliminate, the simpler microprocessor circuit will be. Okay, so we're going to do the following. We're going to find another pair, the vertical pair of kingdoms one and three. So the name of the game is you can reuse the mean terms that use in other group. So we have two groups, the horizontal group and vertical group. Mean term one is used twice in both groups. Make the groups bigger because you want to make the groups bigger because you will eliminate more variables. So this is it. So x prime y and x y. Looks like x prime becomes x, so it's eliminated and y stays constant. So this is so sum of mean terms 0, 1, and 3 is x prime plus y. 
And then you can go ahead and, and actually build this function using uh, basic gates like OR gate right here and inverter into XPRIME. So much easier to build this than the O-frame interns. All right, conclusions. Now let's look at the conclusion. So the map, this is what you do. You look at the canonical form. So you basically have to have the function with sum of mean terms of product of max that. Look at the canonical form and transfer mean terms into the map. Then look at the mean term distribution on the map. So you will you see like in this case we have a pair and we have this pair, M1 and M3 is a pair. M0 and M3 is not a pair. Those are two diagonals in there. You cannot connect M0 and M3. Let's look at this. X prime, Y prime, X prime. Both variables change. And um, that means the both variables would have to be eliminated. But pair eliminates only one variable. So again, single doesn't eliminate variables. Pair eliminates one variable. And the quad eliminates two variables. So if you have a two variable function, quad will em eliminate all variables. OK. And uh, you can reuse the mean term if it makes the group bigger. So we're using mean term one to make the vertical term bigger. And we have our function. So basically, you look at the mean, mean term distribution, and you know you have two groups, and both of them are paired. Okay. And uh, what are the algebraic expressions of this? Oh, this is x bar, and this is y. Constant, one is constant. So that's what it is. Okay, you can prove it algeb algebraically. I'm not going to do it, but you can write write up mean term zero, one, and three, and and uh, factor out some variables. And uh, this is the simplest one I'm going to get. So map will tell you if you can simplify the function, how many terms the function will have. If there will be as many terms as group, and what are those terms in the simplest form? There you go. We have uh, two mean terms. Now you have to cover all the mean terms, all the ones in the map with the group. So every mean term has to be included in at least one group. Okay? So we covered all the mean terms with the groups and we came up with the algebra. Okay, now three variable came up. So we're going to we're going to have a little bit more complex maps. Now, two variable k maps we don't usually use. Those are just too simple. Uh, it's easier to just do it algebraically. But uh, when you go to three, three variable functions, they're a little bit more difficult to simplify algebraically. And four variable functions, again, not And we're going to go into five variable function. Five variable functions are really very convoluted to define it all. So once you look at the five variable function and plot it on a K map, you'll see right away what's this. That's the power of the map. The power of the K map grows with the X. Okay? So the more uh, the really powerful K maps are five and six variables because it's very difficult to simplify those functions. And the other method, but k maps will simplify them right away. So let's look at three variable functions. First, you're going to see mean terms distribution. It's not, um, it's not the order, numerical order. 0, 1, then we have 3, 2, 4, 5, then we have 7, 8. All right, uh, there's a reason behind it. Uh, mean term 1 and mean term 2 cannot be together because they, would, they cannot simplify. Okay? No matter what you do, you cannot simplify mean term one and mean term two. Let's try it algebraically. Okay? That's why they have to let's try to write up mean term one, mean term two. So we have the following function here. Uh mean term one and two. One and two. So I'm going to transfer this form, this term, canonical form of the of the function into a K map. Okay. Alright. So now you see right away. 
we have two singles. We cannot simplify this function. Uh, we can prove that we cannot simplify this. So let's look at this. Min term 1 is x prime y prime z. And mean term 2 is x prime y z prime. All right. Uh, let's look. Looks like we only can we can only factor out x prime. Let's factor out x prime. X prime, and we have y prime z plus y z. Can we simplify anything in the parentheses? Look at the parentheses. Y prime and y z and z prime. This parentheses cannot be that end. What we basically did. So we took this function, took those two mean terms, and rewrote them without crossing out anything. We're not able to cross. That means this function cannot be. And that means that mean term 1 and mean term 2 have to be separate. Because if they were together, that means they would create the pair. And pair simplifies function by one variable. And it is. The same with 5 and 6, they have to be separate. But guess what? 5 and 7, if you put them together, you can simplify them algebraically. And that's why they have to be next to each other. Okay, let's look at uh, some other examples. So let's uh, erase this. And uh, let's transfer function 1 and 3. All right, uh, one and three. Okay, so looks like we have a pair, right? Don't forget to to fill out entire map. I know this only one and three that they exist uh, some mean terms, but uh, you have to show where the zeros are on the map as well. Okay, one and three. This is a pair, so let's uh, do it right here. Here we go. There's a pair. That's how you find the group. So the first thing is to populate the map, transfer transfer mean terms on the map. Second is to find the groups. Third one is to figure out the function. All right, let's figure out the function. Uh, each group will create one term of the function. So it looks like there's only one group. We covered all the mean terms with one group, and uh, we're going to have only one term of the uh, Looks like x prime is stays here. And z stays here. Why? Looks. Uh, let's look at it. X prime is the same, and z is the same. Y prime becomes y. That means this. That means this pair eliminates variable y. We have x prime z. Okay, so this is x. Good. All right, and this is the this is the answer. So basically, what we did, we is we uh, look at the canonical form and transfer it into algebraic form and then we can build the gate diagram. Build, build our okay. Now let's look at next one. Three, five, and six. So we have the following canonical form means the tells us we have mean term three, five, and six. Three. Five and six. Okay. The uh, rest of them are zeros. All right. Now let's look at this. We have the following. Single, single, and single. We cannot create a pair because they're all diagonals. This is very common occurrence in the maps. You see this pattern? Could be 0, 5, 3, 6. This pattern is common in the map. The uh, engineers had to deal with these patterns, and uh, I'll show you how the engineers dealt with the pattern. But you cannot simplify it, and that's no good. You need to have a simple uh, functions because you want to have a simple diagrams, simple, you know, simple microprocessors. All right, so uh, what we have here is unfortunately we cannot simplify this. Theoretically, uh, three singles. We cannot simplify this theoretically, but on a hardware level, we will simplify it. So that's the discussion for uh, the next.
next lectures. All right, so this one cannot be simplified. You see it right away. Uh, and we have the following. In term five, so how do we... Why is this... Uh, uh, so what do we have here? We have uh, mean term five, which is this, right here, mean term three, and mean term six, right here. So if we cannot simplify, we covered all the mean terms with three groups, and we have to write them out. X, Y times Z. Plus X prime Y Z plus X Y Z prime. Okay, so let's look at this uh, algebraic equation. I dare you, I dare you to simplify. If you can, if you can cross anything out by, I don't know, factoring out some. Uh, oh, look at this Z. You can factor out Z here. You can factor out y here, but you have to cross something out. If you can cross something out, but you prove them, uh, there are no maps on work. And I dare you to do it. Okay, so uh, this Carnoma tells us the function of mean times 3, 5, 6. Not be simple. All right, so let's uh, continue. Con let's continue to make this function a little bit more complex. All right, uh, okay, three and seven. Function of three and seven, where is it? Okay, here we go. We have uh, mean terms three and seven. The rest of the mean terms are absent from the function. And we, like you see, we have a one pair, right, right here, one pair. Uh, pair eliminates one variable. Which variable changes in this pair? x prime changes into x, y, right? That means that we have the following function here. This is a function of three variables, and it's y times z. All right, so we're good. Uh, let's write it up here. Why not? y times z. OK. Now let's uh, do the following. Let's get rid of this. And looks like then our next function is 0, 1, 4, 5. 0, 1, 4, 5. Right here. Okay. So I have function of 0, 1, 4, 5. Let's do it. 0, 1, 4, 5. 0, 1, 4, 5. The rest of them are zeros. Now, uh, we can have the following. Either four singles, which will create four terms. No good. Each each group will uh, create a term. Or we have two pairs. That is not as, as good as a, a quad, because two pairs will create two terms. And you cannot, you can simplify. Uh, but this Quad eliminates two variables. So let's look which variables quad eliminates. Um, quad eliminates two variables. So that means out of these three variables, one is constant throughout all four uh, squares. Which one is constant? Looks like it's uh, y prime. Look at this. Y prime is present in all four. So that means x prime is gone because it's changing vertically, and z prime changes horizontally into z. All right, so this function, all these four mean terms, when you add them up, all four mean terms, add it up, and simplify it will give you just right. See how simple it is? You look at this, you look at those four mean terms, plot them on a map, and say, oh, oh this is quad. So that means I, I'm going to simplify this entire four terms into one term. How simple is the term? We have only one variable because quad simplifies back two variables. Okay. All right. Now, uh, so this is y prime. Y is it? Yeah. It's y prime. So let's put it up. Y prime. All right. Uh, zero, two. Zero and two. Okay. This is interesting. This is where we're going to see the map going. 
dimensional. Uh, we have a mean term zero and two. That means following. This looks like those mean terms are disconnected, right? Those are not. This is not a pair. This looks like two singles, but it's not, it's wrong. Uh, let's uh, look at this. And we're going to take this to terms x prime, y prime, z prime, and simplify them plus x prime, y, z prime. When I factor out x prime and z prime, I'm going to get this. And definitely I don't need to factor. That means That means that these two groups are and simplify these two terms and can, can simplify the long term by its goal. Means this two is a pair. All right, let's look at the map. Uh, you see this map right here? I made a, a silly map here. And guess what? Map is not two dimensional. Map is a three dimensional cylinder. Okay, now let's look at this. This map, you see this M0 right here and M2 right here. Actually, when you bend this map into a cylinder right here, M0 and M2 are adjacent, they're right next to each other. Okay, that means the following this one you cannot and denote it as a, as a single. You have to denote this. How do you show it? You show it this way. Who have said? Who have said? That means this is connected with this. Okay? You don't have to connect. You don't have to show me this arch, this entire arch, but you on a map you should show me. Okay? So now we have a pair that is right here. So we're going to do the following. This is a pair. If this is a pair, one variable is is eliminated. Which variable it is? Looks like white comes on. Okay. So that means map it can bend. So this is called a wrap around pair. This pair is called wrap around. It wraps around the map. All right. And uh, this is x times z prime. All right. So zero to the times z prime. All right, we'll do it in red. That's okay. All right, so now let's continue. Let me have a to erase. Let's see if it's All right, let's continue. Now we have the following Z zero two four six. All right, we have 0, 2, 4, 6, function of 0, 2, 4, 6. Those mean terms are present in the function. Mean term 1, 3, 5, and 7 are absent. This is a beautiful symmetrical map. Look at this. There's a symmetry along this vertical line here. So the 1s are on the outside and 0s are on the outside. The map is symmetrical. That means function is really symmetrical. Okay, looks like we have uh, two pairs, one pair here and one pair here. Or we can have two pairs this way, M0, M2 is one pair, wrap around pair. And M4 and M6 is another wrap around pair. But guess what? Those are not two pairs. This is a one. Okay, these two wrap around pairs are right next to each other. Right next to each other. So that means this is a wrap around pair. Okay? This quad wraps around. That means this, let's see, what eliminates two variables? That means only one variable is really constant there, uh, and looks like the z prime. z prime is everywhere here. y changes into y prime, x prime changes to y prime. That means x, prime, x and y is gone and z prime stays. Function, this function actually. All 
of forming terms. We'll simplify into our z prime. Fantastic. Now we start to see the power of the map. Try to switch into black. This function is equal to z prime. Okay. Uh, I know it's a long lecture, but you know what? Once you get it, it's, you're going to be breezing through the rest of the maps. Because all the maps have to be su subjected to the same rules. So the, all the maps will obey the same rules. Two variable map, three variable map, four, five variable map will obey the same rules. So I'm being very, very detailed now, but then I will breeze through four and five. All right, so let's uh, continue with our examples. Okay, it looks like the next example is, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All eight from zero to seven. All right, all eight from zero to seven. So we have entire map is filled with ones. Guess what? Remember from the uh, uh, two variable maps, when the entire map is filled with ones, we can safely assume this function, wherever you go, this function is always equal to one. Now, uh, this group, okay, so this this mean terms can be covered in many different ways. Uh, can be covered as two quads, 0, 1, 4, 5, 2, 3, 6, 7, or can be covered with these two quads, 0, 1, 3, and 2, and quad 4, 5, 7, and 6. But quad eliminates only two variables. And looks like we have all three variables. I mean, it has to be a group bigger than quad, and it is. It's called uh, octet. Octet. All right. So octet is the group of eight adjacent mean terms. Look at this. All the mean terms are beautifully adjacent to each other, and this is an octet. All right. So this is an octet. All right, so this is an octet. Octet eliminates three variables. As you see, wherever you go on the map, there's one. This function is equal to one. That means there's no variables in this function. X, Y, and Z are gone. Only one left. Okay. Uh, as you see here, in this group, within this group, all three variables change. All three variables change within this group. Why they are all gone? Octet eliminates. All right, uh, do we have any other pair? Okay, so this one is equal to one. All right, now I'm going to show you some. Okay, so that, that will be it. That'll be it for, it for today. Tomorrow I'm going to show you some more, uh, a little bit more uh, convoluted examples, a little bit more advanced examples of three variables. So we're going to, is this and we're going to do a little bit more, more advanced stuff and I, I'm going to see you tomorrow. Okay.